Brian, you're up next. Brian, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Phil? Hanging in there, Brian. What's up? Oh, I just wanted to make a comment on the whole issue with uh, Arizona, with the judge out there. I think it's bunch a whole bunch of Democratic bovine scatology. Indeed it is. Uh, you know, the the governor out there really needs to remind the, the judge that, first off, she doesn't have the ability to make law from the bench, and she has no authority in that state. And that her opinion is just that. It's not. It's an opinion, not a law. That's exactly what I've been saying. I mean, the law's already been made. She can't rewrite the law. The law's been made. The federal law is already there. The state law reinforces the federal law. There's nothing to argue about. That's right. Yep. There's no way that they ought to allow her to, to dictate from the bench. Well, but I they, mean, if but, it, if but it, they are they, against they, everything that we stand for. I know, the but they, they're going to go look. They're going to go through the process. They're going to go through the appeals process, which. Which I don't know. I mean, you know, of course, they're they're a little more, uh, I guess, I don't want to say rational because I'm very rational about it. I just got a different approach. They're more pragmatic about it than I am. I believe that if you if you uh, cede uh, the uh, argument that they have the authority to decide this by going to the appeals, because in essence you do, if you say, well, we're going to appeal this, then you cede the argument that the federal government has the authority over this issue. And so then you, you're going to have to abide by what ultimately is going to be a Supreme Court decision on it, whenever that may happen. And if it goes against you, then you lose. I think what you do is you stick to your guns and you say, hey, this is a state issue. We've made the state law. The state law is exactly like the federal law, although it goes a step further and says that we can't profile. So we're going ahead with our state law because that's the federal law. End of discussion. Aaron, you would be up next to the Phil Valentine Show. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing well, Phil. How you doing? Very well, sir. What's on your mind? Well, I just want to comment on uh, you're arguing with liberals using logic. I just, uh, from my past experience, most liberals have different morals and values, and therefore, would that not give them different logic? Well, logic is logic. I mean, they can argue logic, but it's illogical. Right. Well, <laughs> I just wanted to say that I that I well, that's true. I want to say I'm a big fan. I'm from Canada. I'm living in Nashville now. Well, great. And, uh, I, you are I legal, think, aren't you? I am. I have a green card. Good. I married an American. <laughs> Good for you. But I, want, I just want to say that uh, I've seen firsthand what happens up there and how bad it can get as far as 11 and a half hour emergency room waits and the taxes are ridiculous and and the direction that this government is taking the United States is if they succeed, it'll be a disaster. And, and I really enjoy being down here. Um, mind you, I'm always surrounded by liberal Canadians, and uh, it's it's tough for them to see that. I, I, I don't know. I'm just not happy with what's going on in Washington. But that's coming from a Canadian who's seen a lot of socialist stuff firsthand. Yeah. Well, look, and, and, and I'm glad you brought up the... The socialized medicine argument. This is another one that you can win on logic, because I mean, it's it, it, it. This is basic logic when it comes to healthcare, because their emotional argument is going to be this that, and this is what they love to say: healthcare is a right. They even say health insurance is a right. And instead of arguing with them about that, the the, the way you can get them uh, into that uh, that box or paint themselves in that corner is to say, okay, all right, for sake of argument, I'm not going to say that you're right, but let's just, just, for the sake of argument, let's argue that you're right, uh, that uh, health care is a right. And they go, well, there, there you go. Then, then, then you agree with me. All right, health care is a right. Does that mean that uh, you have a right to get it free or subsidized from the government? Well, yes. Really? So all of your rights, you think, go hand in hand with getting them free or subsidized from the government? Oh, Absolutely then uh, would you be willing to chip in to buy me a gun? What? Well, I have a right to keep and bear arms, but I can't afford a gun. So uh, are, are the tax dollars going to be redistributed so I can buy a gun or several guns? Um, you know, I have a right to freedom of speech, and I really, really have always wanted to be on a talk radio show. Buy me a radio station. What? You just said it was a right? You said our rights are... Paid for by the people. That's what you just, didn't you just say that? Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, how about a newspaper? You know, I really, 
can you just have one delivered to my house? Because I really want to read the newspaper, but I can't afford it. So why don't you uh, have the tax dollars redistributed so that the, the newspapers are free and they can just send one to my door? Well, I did. Have a, that's, a, that's what you said. You're the one who said this. You're the one who said that, that health care is a right and therefore it should be paid for. So all our rights should be paid for. How many rights do we have? We have a right to all sorts of things, but we don't have a right to have it paid for by other people. Oh, checkmate, folks. The game's over when you use logic.